In today's video, I'll show you one of the most underrated features of React Query. Now, I've been using React Query for more than three years, and I'm actually surprised that no one is really talking about this because it has been a real game changer for me. Not only did it help me get rid of a lot of repetitive code, but the result was cleaner code, fewer bugs, and a drastically better developer experience. Let's check this out. So in order to explain this React Query feature, I have actually set up a really simple example that shows exactly how it works. So what we have here is a very simple application. It's just a contact list and the user can come over here and delete a contact. So when you delete a contact, you have a loading state and a notification. And of course, as you have noticed, when you delete a contact, it disappears from the list. This is a very simple user interaction, but let's take a look at the code for a moment. So the code is actually very simple. We just have a query to get the users per page. And then we have a mutation to delete the user. So this is how the delete contact mutation currently looks like. As you can see, it's pretty complex. But all that's happening here is that we're calling this use mutation hook from React Query. We're passing in our delete function, which comes from the client. And then when the mutation is successful, we're showing a success notification when there's an error, we're showing an error notification. And when the mutation has settled, which means either error or success, we invalidate the query client cache. And here we just want to invalidate the query of the contacts so that the user can see that the contact has been deleted and the list is updated. Now, this is a lot of code. And to be honest, it's fine if you're just having a few mutations. But in real life code bases, this is a lot of repetitive code. And it's also pretty hard to understand what's happening. But actually, we can simplify this code a lot just by taking advantage of the meta field. So this is how simple the mutation can actually look like. So here we can simply define which queries get invalidated by this mutation, the success message to show the user when it has succeeded, and the error message to show if the query fails. So defining the fields here is the first step, but that's not all, because if you just add these fields here, nothing is going to happen. Next thing you need to do is actually handle this globally. And the way to do that is for a start to define how a mutation meta object looks like. In this case, I have defined these three fields and I have also made them optional. So I always have the flexibility. If I don't want to show an error toast after a mutation, I can just omit, for example, the error message. And then we need to globally handle these fields. And the way to do that is to come to where you're defining your query client and just add this code. So we are defining the default on success behavior. And here we can just check the meta that success message. And if it's defined, then we're going to show a notification for that. Same thing goes for error handling. And of course, on settled, we invalidate the queries. And just like that, we have the same behavior as before, but with a drastically better code. So this was actually a sneak peek into a bigger project that I'm working on and it's showcasing all the React patterns that I've been using. I'm really excited to show you that very soon. If you have been using React Query recently, I would definitely recommend checking out my previous videos. I put a lot of effort into making them, but I'm sure you're going to get a lot of value out of watching them. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.